Good morning again, Trucker Todd here. I'm here in Van, Texas. It's around 30 degrees. I'm freezing cold a little nasally, but it's time for another video. <clears throat> Bear with me here. Today we're going to talk about the craziness in trucking. And I started driving back, well, let me say this before we go any further. Um, this is not directed at any one company. This is kind of directed at the industry in general. And uh, it's kind of an impromptu video. I thought of it while I was doing my last one. And uh, so there's, I've got a list of things that I do want to talk about in future videos. Uh, this is kind of an impromptu one. And that's why you want to make sure you like and subscribe so that you get notified when I put these videos out. And the fun thing about doing these videos is hearing your comments and your additions to my videos as far as telling me your thoughts. Sometimes you guys think of stuff that I didn't even think of in the video. And it's always great to get that feedback from you. So make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment. If you need to ask me something, uh, I've got my email in there. You can email me if you're interested. Uh, everybody knows I work at Roadrunner Freight. If you're more interested in getting more information about that, leave me a uh, an email and I'll get back with you. I'll get you hooked up with the recruiter and get you make sure everything goes smooth for you. But anyway, let's jump right into the craziness of trucking. <clears throat> if my voice will hold up. All right, here we go. So I started driving December 3rd of 1996. Coming up on 24 years now. As uh, you've heard in previous videos, I've stopped here and there, sold cars, uh, was a service manager, or not a service manager, a service rider for a while. I managed a car lot for a little while. So I've done several different things, but I would say over 20 years of that has been right here behind the steering wheel driving a truck. And since I started in December with Swift Transportation, I had a really good trainer. And I learned a lot. He taught me a lot. Uh, it took me a, a long time to really get what I would say is decent at this or good at this. But <clears throat> we did a lot of things that at other jobs I'd never experienced. And I remember being in training and asking him, well, why, why is it this way? And he's like, that's the way it's always been done. And I thought in this video, I would uh, give you some examples of things that that's just the way we do it. Nobody knows why. It's always been that way. It'll probably always be that way. And how it's different from Joe Sixpack that works at your local factory. And uh, I'm even, even going to compare it to other types of trucking. Okay, for example, I remember him telling me every morning you need to get up and do a pre-trip. It's required by law. I remember when I was getting my CDL, <clears throat> that they uh, they mentioned the pre-trip. You had to uh, do a walk around, show how you did it. And I remember asking my trainer, well, how much do we get paid for doing pre-trips and post-trips and getting fuel? Well, nothing. You do that for free. You're getting mileage pay. All the extra work you do is just part of the deal. Well, why is that? Why don't we get paid for everything we do? That's just the way it is. And uh, then you move on to detention. When I first started, there was little to no detention. Very few companies had detention. Now, a lot of companies have detention, but it's after two hours or after three hours or after an hour. Uh, I've heard of one company, I'm not even going to throw them out there because I don't know this to be a fact. I heard one company, it's 12 hours. You wait 12 hours and then they start paying you detention. Now this is time that you're tied up. You could be earning money. Uh, oftentimes you're required to stay awake and answer your phone when they call. Sometimes they want you to watch them load it. And you do this for free as well. Now... I can see both sides of this. I can see people saying, well, you're not driving, so you're not working. But at the same time, your 14-hour clock is ticking away. So why are you required to give 
at, you know, two, three, four hours of, of your time for no pay. Well, that's just the way it is. Now, think for a second. You got a teenage son. He gets a job at the grocery store or fast food place. He says, Dad, the first two hours I'm there, they're not going to pay me. But after that, they're going to start paying me. What would you tell your, your son or daughter? Oh, that's great, son or daughter. I'm glad you got that job. That's just the way it is. Or would you say, no, I expect you to be paid for all your time. But somehow in trucking, that's just the way it is. And uh, so that's another thing that I've always wondered about. Um, I've been told, well, they have to... Uh, they have to have a reasonable amount of time to unload the trailer. Why? I mean, there's drop and hook. There's uh, and uh, even if they should be allowed uh, a reasonable time to unload the trailer, why should that come at your expense? Then let's talk about. I'm going to name call in this video. Let's talk about Walmart distribution centers. Walmart distribution centers used to, I don't know if they still do, I hadn't been to a Walmart distribution center in a, in a year or two, but they used to charge you a $50 drop fee to drop your trailer on their property. Okay, that's totally backwards. They're using that trailer for storage while it's sitting there, and they're also able to unload it at their convenience. So, if anything, they should be paying the carrier $50 for the usage of that trailer. Now, they say, in their defense, they say, well, it's because we have to pay the yard guy to move the trailer. They're already paying the yard guy to move their trailers, to unload their freight off of their Walmart trucks. So, again, I go back to, instead of charging $50, they should be paying the carrier $50 for the opportunity of using that trailer. Another thing, Walmart, and it's not just them, a lot of distribution centers do this. You pull in, uh, grocery warehouses are bad about this too, and you back into the dock with the product that they ordered now. Let's not forget that. And they say, well, uh, to unload your trailer, we're going to charge you $180, $200 to unload your trailer. And a lot of them have these weird policies like the driver can unload it, but he can't use any of the power equipment, which makes it almost impossible. And they give you a time limit. Driver has to be done in an hour, hour and a half. They don't give their guys any time limit, but you as a driver receive a time limit. Sorry, I'm getting a call. And that makes no sense. Think of the Postal Service for a second, or FedEx. Imagine if you ordered something from Amazon or uh, any of those, or even the Postal Service, and your package come in, and you told the carrier that brought it to you, the FedEx, the UPS, whoever it was, in order for me to take this package that I ordered, you're going to have to pay me $180. What do you think they'd say? <laughs> well, forget it. We'll just return it. But in trucking, we put up with it. That's just the way it is. Um, imagine, you know, some of them will say, especially the grocery warehouses and Walmart, we want it pre-stacked or stacked a certain way. We want it so many on each level, so many levels high. They used to call it tie and high. I don't know what they call it now. But uh, imagine if you ordered several things from Amazon and it got to you and you told the UPS or FedEx guy that brought it to you, in order for me to accept those packages, you, I'm going to have to stack them a certain way and you're going to have to pay me to stack them. Well, they would just return the stuff. They don't care if you take it or not. But in trucking, that's just the way it is. And uh, I've, I've never understood how they get away with charging you to take the product that they ordered. And so these are some things that 
I've just always thought was kind of weird about the trucking industry. I'll give you another one. Uh, I was talking to a guy last night, and we was talking about cost per mile, what it costs to run. And he was saying his cost is around $1.65 a mile. I was telling him mine is quite a bit less. A lot of that depends, like he said, where you run, uh, what you're hauling. Um, the, I mean, there's a lot of fac factors. How your truck is spec'd out, what your payments are, what your overhead is as far as insurance and things like that. But recently, uh, in the last two or three weeks, I went to Denver. And the broker called me and offered me a load at 72 cents a mile. Now, if you've never driven a truck, you might think 72 cents a mile is a great rate. Take, for example, this other guy that I was telling you about. His cost per mile is $1.65 a mile. He loses 90-something uh, cents a mile every mile he hauls that load. My cost per mile is much better than that, but I would still lose a substantial amount of money hauling that load. Why would anybody haul freight that they're going to lose money with? It's just the way it is. Now, I did not do that. I, I said, you know, Z, I'm not going to say his name. I said, I'd rather sit than haul that freight. And about 15 minutes later, he found something. I got a guy backing in beside me. I'm making sure he's not going to run into me. He found a load that paid $1.20 a mile. Still way too low, but much better than $0.72 cents a mile. I don't know why these companies, and I'm, the company I'm thinking of right now is Swift, who, you know, in York, Pennsylvania, they're shutting down one of their yards. They're laying off some people. But it's not just them. It's the all the mega carriers. They're hauling this super cheap freight, and they're wondering why they're not making any money. Originally, they were getting students and paying them almost nothing, and that's where they were saving some money, and they were, it's it's a long, complicated deal, but because of the breadth of their company, the, the width of their company, and the amount of trucks they had, they could work on super thin margins. Well, then the inexperience caught up with them. The students started wrecking, things like that. Insurance premiums went up, and suddenly they weren't profitable no more. So you see companies like USA Truck that reported in their last quarter a $400, I think it was a either a $400 or a $1,000 profit for the quarter. I think it was $400 for the quarter. And you see Swift having layoffs, and a lot of these mega carriers are struggling because they were basically using student labor to save money and now it's costing them and so I, I don't know why first of all I don't know that's another thing about trucking let's go into that next when you go to the post office and mail a letter the post office says this letter this package will cost you X number of dollars to mail and you say yes or no in trucking, it's the exact opposite. You go to a shipper, and they say, this is what we're going to pay. And these trucking companies go, no, wait, 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 we'll do it cheaper than that. So you end up, there ends up being all this cheap freight, and nobody wins in that market. Imagine if you went to the post office, and you said, I'll give you $5 to mail this package, and the post office said, no, nah, we'll do it for 42 cents. And then FedEx came in and said, we'll do it for 35 cents. And you're just in a race to the bottom in trucking. I don't understand why it's that way. But again, that's just the way it is. So that's my rant for today. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, I'm sure there's more things I forgot about. I'd love to hear your comments below. Share this video with your friends that are in trucking or that you think might be interested in this or on your show, social platforms. And we'll see you on the next one. I got to get to driving. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye.